The Secretary of the Air Force, Frank Kendall, has announced that Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri and Dias Air Force Base in Texas will be the second and third locations to host the new B-21 Raider bombers. Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota was previously selected as the first base for the B-21. General Thomas Boussier, head of the Air Force Global Strike Command, highlighted the progress in the B-21's production, emphasizing that digital engineering and an open architecture design are helping create a strategic deterrent capable of delivering a swift and effective response. The B-21 Raider is a cutting-edge bomber designed for long-range strike missions, with the ability to handle both nuclear and conventional warfare. While the B-21 is being prepared for service, the Air Force will continue to rely on its existing B-1 and B-2 bombers to maintain readiness. This next-gen bomber is a vital part of the U.S. Air Force's strategy for nuclear deterrence and long-range attacks. It can carry up to 20,000 pounds of weapons, making it a powerful asset for a variety of missions. The B-21 measures 54 feet 16 meters, in length and has a wingspan of 132 feet 40 meters, striking a balance between size and stealth for deep strike operations. Weighing in at 70,000 pounds, 31,751 kilograms, when empty, the B-21 is relatively light for its class. It can take off with a maximum weight of 180,000 pounds, 81,647 kilograms, which allows it to carry substantial fuel and weapon loads, giving it an extended operational range. In terms of performance, the B-21 can fly at speeds over Mach 0.8, fast enough to reach targets quickly while maintaining its stealth capabilities. Built using advanced technologies like digital engineering and open architecture, the bomber is designed to adapt to future upgrades, making it a critical element of the U.S. military's deterrence strategy for years to come. The Air Force plans to purchase at least 100 B-21 bombers. Currently, the aircraft is in low-rate production and undergoing flight tests with initial deliveries expected in the mid-2020s.